Here's the thing, right? You never spend a lot of money on a suit. Get a, don't get a cheap suit, right? No. But get like a reasonably priced suit and then get it tailored to fit you. Because that only costs about 15 pounds, right? Yeah. So get it all fit up, bite off the rack, then take it into a tailor. They'll fit it to fit you directly, right? It'll, and then it looks more expensive. It'll look a little better. See? Yeah. So I read that like, style's very important to you. Is that, is that right? Well, I mean, I, I just sort of feel like style's important in everything. Yeah. You know, it's important in, uh, particularly in stand-up, because different people have different styles. It's not just mm -hmm. the way you look, it's the way you deliver things, it's the way you sit, the way you move, the way you approach a topic, right? So I, I sort of see that as, when I talk about style, that's what I'm talking about. And yeah, that to me is really important. Yeah. So tell us about the show. Well, the show is uh, sort of a, 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 a combination of a kind of a Dave Allen thing. Dave Allen, you might recall from the 70s, sort of uh, Irish comic on TV, was always smoking on TV, sitting in a suit, smoking, drinking, telling stories, so I do that. And then I turn into this kind of ranting, kind of gospel thing, Atticus Finch. If you ever read uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, yeah. right? That kind of like, ah, <laughs> that moment happens. And um, then, uh, you know, it sort of goes through various moments. It's really, I, 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 I'm not one of these people who says like, oh, I found a box of letters in my attic and I turned it into a show, you know what I mean? And my mom died. Mm, no, it wasn't that. It's just sort of whatever I'm talking about, whatever's in the news, whatever I think is interesting, all sort of strung together, mm -hmm. and then brought home with like a final kind of, what have we learned from moments. Oh, I see. <laughs> so the kind of topics you talk about, are is it like politics? Um, a like, little, I, I touch on a little bit on politics. I talk about uh, the UK a bit. I talk about Scotland. I talk about uh, Scottish independence. Mm -hmm. We have to cover that, of course. <laughs> um, I talk about the gays, and they're all there. <laughs> Madness, <laughs> gay marriage, um, you know, uh, ranting, ranting, ranting. I talk about, you know, like a lot of sort of like motivational speaking stuff. I do a whole thing on Oprah. Ah, uh, everyone loves Oprah. Uh, well, oh. <laughs> you know what I mean. She's a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. You don't want to, you certainly don't want to make her angry. Yeah. Let's put it that Have way. Have you met Oprah? Have I met Oprah? Are you kidding me? No, I haven't <laughs> met Oprah. But, uh, uh, no. I, 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 well, one wonders if Oprah really exists. Haven't we all met Oprah in a way? We all have. Do you she know? Touched, she touched us all. So many of us. <laughs> so, when did you decide to become a comedian? I know you used to do cabaret. Yeah, I still do a bit of cabaret. I, you know, I just found that, um, you know, I was spinning my wheels a bit in the cabaret world. You know, you can be the biggest thing in cabaret no one's ever heard of you. Meanwhile, you don't have to be that big in comedy and you have a bit of a reputation. There's much more of a trajectory in the comedy world. So I was on the cabaret circuit for a while and uh, I remember being on the underground in London around Christmas time. Every other poster on the underground was some comic I'd never heard of, never heard of, selling their DVD from Wembley. I thought to myself, I am in the wrong business. You know what I mean? So I ditched the piano player, kept the story, threw in a few more jokes, kept the suit, boom. Stand up comedy. Stand up comedy. <laughs> <laughs> so who are your comedy heroes? Who are your inspirations? Uh, I love Dave Allen. Mm -hmm. I'm a huge fan of Scott Capurro. We've done a lot of work together. Um, I like a lot of American comics from the sort of 70s. Uh, Bob Newhart, you should yeah. check him out on YouTube. He's a great one. Um, I love George Carlin, mm -hmm. he's one of the greats. Um, currently working today, who do I like? Um, you know, uh, the obvious ones. I like Stuart Lee. I like uh, I like Russell Brand. I think Russell Brand yeah, is great. Um, I don't know. I you know what? I don't watch a lot of comedy. Probably probably my first mistake. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you're American. Where are you from? America? Are you from? I'm from LA. LA. Yeah. And how would you say American audiences compared to British audiences? Here's the thing about American comics, right? Usually, they deliver every punchline. They serve it up like this, boom. I opened for Margaret Cho in London. She said to me, slow down. Take, take your time, deliver your punchline, pause, do the next setup, punchline, pause. That's what American audience wants. Mm -hmm. British audiences and British comics throw their punchlines down here. They just throw them away all the time, right? That's part of the style, you know, you just sort of like say something, boom, you don't make a big deal, you move on to the next thing. Maybe, you, maybe the audience caught it, maybe they didn't. 
those who caught it love it because a lot of other people didn't catch it. They love it even more, right? And that's a, a style in this country that doesn't go over well. When I go over to the U.S., they're like, slow down, take your time, deliver, deliver, deliver. And here it's much more down here, down here, down here. What do you prefer? I sort of prefer this. Yeah. Sense. But it can be a great uh, thrill when you're in the U.S. and you do that because they scream their heads off. And it's like, wow, you never expect that kind of reaction when you're throwing it down here, you know? Yeah. It's a, just a different style. So, what's the future plans after Gospel Tree? Gospel Tree? Well, oh, you know, uh, the West End, Broadway, <laughs> Vegas, uh, Beijing. I don't know. I'm, uh, I'm uh, you know, I'd love to come back next year. And uh, I have a great little room at the Hive, which is not around here. It's, uh, do you know the Hive? Yeah, it's on a Midri Street. Midri Street, yeah, so. yeah. Basically, yeah. it's basically it's a dump. A lot of the students know it. I'm, yeah, the kids I've, love me. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've known how I've here. Yes, yes, actually. <laughs> it's uh, some sort of 18 and over disco in the evening. The whole place smells like, you know, links in despair. <laughs> and, um, but yeah, I, I would love to come back there. It's a great little room for me, so my hope is to be back oh, next year. Sorry, I thought I was about to fall there. <laughs> okay, remain calm. Remain calm. Okay, so when and where are you on? You're at the Hive. I'm at the Hive. Every day at 5.30, you can come more than once. And it's free. And uh, yeah, that's me. Well, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thanks for taking the time, it's yeah. It's been a pleasure. Absolutely. What's your name? Lauren. This has been Lauren for Waffle TV. Yeah.